and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, uh, you can see the screen, right? Can you see the screen? Just give me a confirmation. Okay. So we're going to talk about Streamlit uh, today tutorial. So Streamlit is a Python framework that helps you to build dashboards, uh, especially it's used in for data science projects because it gives you options to uh, do charts, anything that just helps you to present your data analysis on a dashboard user interface. So we're going to see a demo and some introduction on Streamlit. And also we're going to discover uh, the Streamlit documentation. I'm going to show you how you can uh, read the documentation for your need. If my voice is not hard or the slides not straight, please unmute and let me know. Okay. So Streamlit helps to create interactive dashboard, like I said. Uh, it's built on top of Python, so if you are familiar with Python, you are able to understand Simlit quite easily. It's really understandable uh, framework. So uh, you can access this common Python library that you are currently using, like Pandas, NumPy, on your Simlit module file. So uh, everything is similar with uh, the knowledge that you already have regarding Python Streamlit, just give you this platform to build dashboard, but on the background, if you still Python, if it was a language is Python, uh, Streamlit has its own custom uh, language structures to do to, to implement your services, which are very easy to understand. We'll see it uh, later. So uh, it's easier to deploy data science and machine learning project is compared to other frameworks like React, uh, Angular, Vue, which you can use those as well, but this is much easier. At, le uh, at least for beginners, this is a very easier framework to build your front-end application, your interface to show a few work. So uh, the installation is simple. You just do pip install Streamlit. And uh, once it's installed, you can run it with this image run up to PY. So there are references that I put, the documentation, uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. You can check that. And now let's just go back to the demo. I think you will understand much better from the demo. Okay. So the first thing that you will do is create a form for anything. Is that a question? Let's just go back to the code. So once you create uh, create a folder and you can uh, create your own virtual uh, environment if you want. So I have already created a virtual environment using this code. If you are not familiar with this one, by doing this, this the last word that I'm writing the in, it could be any any words of your choice. It's just going to give you a separate uh, environment in, in the in the specified folder to install Python codes, uh, Python libraries and stuff like that. Just a separate Python environment to do your work. It's not a, a big thing. It's just uh, a common practice that's usually done. So I already run this, and as you can see in my streamlit folder, I already have this environment. So everything that I'm going to install to create this dashboard will be under this environment. So I can only, only access it when I open this environment. So to access the, any installation that I make, I already installed Streamlit within the command that I showed you above. So to access all that, I have to be inside the environment, there, the Python environment. So to be inside the environment I just created, I only have to do this command. Source, the app. I'm activating the environment, which is if you populate it, there is a bin, under bin, there is activate. So if you activate the environment, so you can access a particular environment. So when you do this, you can see accessing your environment. So if I just page it, version, okay. 
Since I've already installed it, I have the, this version. But if I am out of this environment and do this the same command streamlit dash version, I wouldn't find it because I installed the streamlit application inside this environment. It's not in, an important thing. You can do it without installing having this Safari environment. It's just a common practice that is usually done. I just want to show you that it's not a requirement. So now let's just say uh, I'm on my streamlit application. So I already have this startup code that we're going to see what each code it means. So I have, like I told you before, you can use your common Python libraries on your student application. Uh, after PY, this is the file I created to run my stream data app. So once you install the stream data application, it automatically will detect any stream data code that you're going to write to build your dashboard. So since that's already been installed, I imported pandas numpy to do the work. Uh, so let's, let me just show you first the uh, documentation here. So this is a same official documentation. It's also found on the reference. So anything you want to do, you can search it and you can find it uh, on the documentation. So for example, here I already put a style sheet. Uh, a, sheet, uh, a sheet sheet where most of the Streamlit commands are found once you install your Streamlit app. These are most of to display tickets. You read these Streamlit commands. It's uh, to mitigate data, to plot graphs. Everything is included here. And what you don't find here, you can also search it and you can find it. So, based on this, let's just say start from creating for our application a header. That's usually what we are doing. So here, uh, just a container is if you are con a familiar with HTML tag, it's like a div, which gives you this container to space or a section uh, to put your some, co some content of your, uh, um, some content that you decide to put on your dashboard. So I decided to put on some part of the browser container to put a header, a title, and some kind of paragraph, thing like that, using this streamlit keywords, which you find on the documentation. The name is also descriptive, what they are doing. So, uh, and this one is giving you, uh, if, you if you know HTML tag, giving a title, heading, page, tag. The purpose is it gives your browser some name and icon for your browser. This is what it's doing. I give my page title, the entire dashboard title, data, data dashboard. Let me just say dashboard. I give it some uh, emoji for my browser, for my dashboard. Uh, when it displays on the browser, it will show this icon. And I give it a layout saying white. So let's just run it and see what this are doing on my front end application. So when we run it, we have to do this one. You have to call the file you are running. Let's break on This is what I do. If you know on HTML tag, when you give your page title, the dashboard will show up here. And when you give it an icon, it will show up here. It's just like an identification of your uh, application or your front end. So it's just a common practice that you do when you build on a website. So I already give that. This is my subheading. This is my mm, title. And these are the ACT just quite topics that I want to write anything that it just it's, it's just these commands are a way of writing, a way of building your website on Streamly. So if you are with HTML tag, uh, it's, I'm, I'm hoping all of you are uh, familiar with HTML tag. So if you are familiar with that, it's doing the same purpose but with different syntax. So the, all you have to do is get the syntax from the documentation and you can be as creative as you want on your dashboard.
So on the second one, I decided to create two sections, another two sections. Like I told you, a container will give you a space. So this is one container that I created or one div in, in HTML language. Now I want to create a content right here and right here. How I will be back on Streamlit is I'm going to use the column syntax, the column keyword from Streamlit. Uh, I can be, I can create as many as columns I, as I want. I can say three, I can say four, but I want to have two sides here and here on the same row. So I put it like this, I define it like this, which this, everything you'll find the guide on the documentation again. So on the left column and on the first section, I asked it to put a header, something in to put this kind of um, template, which they switched up to mostly talked about. Just be creative as you want. Uh, on the right column, and you use the with key to indicate the second section also with the name. And here, PD is the pandas library that I just uh, imported here. And I, I can access it on your stream up like any Python module. So it's just here I decided to post something. So this is just a mock data. Let's say my data frame contains three calls, and these calls have these, these values, and now I want to plot them using chart, bar chart. So now let, let's see what it looks like. So you can click here on the on your application, the rerun command to see your changes, or keep it always rerun. So anytime you make change, you will see it automatically. So let's just write this one. It's still running here. I just plot it. Uh, something using the mock data that I get it. Now our dashboard is gone. It's becoming really cool. So if you want to add, let's say, some sidebar here instead of just like this, um, you just you can go back here and just search something. I want to add a sidebar. See, it mathematically brings you the sidebar syntax for three bit. They they have a default created sidebar, you just only have to access it. It gives you an example. For example, let's just display this one. Let's see what it looks like. It added the sidebar. It does stream with already a custom done uh, sidebar, which is uh, responsive in mobile application in every kind of uh, window window size, and it will automatically automatically will add the sidebar for you. All you have to do is change these names for your purposes. Maybe you want to gather all the fruits in one menu and the other contents in the other. So you can be creative as you want. It's really a simple uh, dashboard. A framework to build dash dashboards. So let's go back here and let's under this one. Uh, what else is there? So uh, for and this is the other one. This markdown syntax of streaming. It can help you to be as creative as you want. So markdown is another way of uh, language out there that mostly is used in GitHub profiles. Uh, in different areas, you can see this markdown language. So you can also access them in a stream lead. You can access this markdown functionalities using the ACT markdown syntax of stream lead. Uh, markdown is like an HTML, but it can give you the option to add items, links, different structures that can beautify your dashboard. So you can ask, access it on stream lead using the ACT markdown. So I just give it here a button, or I can give it in HTML function here also. Form. If I want to add a fork, I can add this one. Form here. I can add inputs. For example, I want to register something with it. Inputs. So let's say I want to add this. This is a normal HTML tag. So if I write this one without passing it through a markdown and saying it can allow to read 
uh, HTML with the value true, it will just consider it as a simple text. It wouldn't give you the format structure of HTML on your uh, browser. So when you pu push it on the markdown and allow it to, uh, to read HTML uh, structures, it will put it like a, a formal HTML website, formal HTML structure. So it's, it's very important uh, also uh, syntax to beautify, to be creative with your dashboard. So I want to also mention that, that's why I included. So if we see here and we run it, Okay, the input is not valid. Maybe I can do something. It's just like this one. And this is a one that causes an error. It doesn't have a closing path, so. We just run it again. Yeah, it put the form like this, and it needs SSS filing, so it's not to it's, uh, put it in the right way. So if you put SSS styling on the stream bit, you can arrange it, this one to be more uh, attractive. So uh, I'm gonna leave how you can add CSS to your stream bit for you guys to figure out that there are different options to put CSS to structure your uh, dashboard more correctly. So let's just So I already made a simple thesis for this button. They have this thesis here that I just, I record the button of HTML tags and give it color or something like that. And you can also apply this one on this markdown HTML that I'm using. And there are also other ways to add CSS to your streaming application. So read up on that. I have also put some references on the slide. Uh, whereas now we see the most common used uh, stream lead syntax to build your application. Now, what if you want to connect your stream, which you probably need to do, connect your SQL with stream lead application so you can drive your data from PostgreSQL or any SQL database. Uh, it also can access a database to your stream lead. So let's just, this one, I already have a PostgreSQL database and I want, I have this table in my PostgreSQL user table and I want to access it in my stream lead. And I can use your data to plot, plot it so I can show uh, some kind of ED analysis on my dashboard. So I, I, I want to plot it using bar chart once I fetch my data from the, my postgres. So let's see what happens. The table only has one row, so the plot might not be big enough. So let's see if it fetches it. Yeah. Fetch it from my database. And I already have one row, so the budget is a bit small. So if you have more data, you can analyze it with this one. There are a lot of plotting. There are line chart, bar chart here. This is there are here. This three charges, there are different charts that you can use to show up your data at the end of the data that you need to display in your dashboard. Okay. Now this is after you connect the SQL, you can do a, you can manipulate the data that you delegate in different ways to show off your work on your dashboard. Uh, if you want to also upload your CSV file instead of connecting with your SQL, you also can have the option to do that. So you can just click here and search for uploading file. How can I upload? Just click upload. Just click upload. You can, this, it has the option to file uploader. It can give you example, also how you can use this functionality. So just write a city file uploader and it will give, it will put on your uh, dashboard an option to pick a file from your machine 
and displayed it. And once you find that file, you can also now be creative by plotting the data or by putting it on a table, anything you want. So you can also run this one and see what it can do. Let, for now, let's just pick this one and see what you can do with it. Now, I want also to do uh, this city data frame. If you can see it, it will change your data, whatever data you found from database or something on data frame. And uh, uh, once you got the data frame, it will also uh, display a table of that data frame and you can again make a chart of it. So uh, I can do the same thing here. Once I put the data frame, I can choose. Convert it to the app. So let's now run it and see the change. Give me this beautiful drag and drop. I can either drag it or I can also browse it from my computer. It just so make this one for now. Okay, the, the CSV file is too much for string it. So if you have smaller data CSV files, you can access maybe let's just change it to this tracking the track CSV file. Smaller, I think. Yeah, it's pretty like this. Now if I choose to display this data using layer chart or any chart so types that are from string bit i can be creative as i want so this is i think i covered most of the things that you have to see uh, i think now you are confident enough to read the documentation for your need uh, one thing i also mentioned uh, here i put a css file right here so how i access it on my stream application it then is this command is this command here so i just Write a simple function so it can open the file as a style CSS and read any command line of my CSS to be displayed here. So I put like Macron again, it's very useful. It can read uh, any Macron uh, writing, web writing, you can add emoji and stuff like this. So I'm just asking it to read the styles that are found in my style CSS. So I just put the location of my style CSS here. It will open it and it will read the CSS file using the smart this And I also, you can also have the options to, if, if you see it here, there is a header right here. There is this header here, the stream with default header. So if I don't want to see it, I can uh, make here the header. I can choose to make it visit header. If I make it hidden, it, you will not see the header part. Uh, if there's a footer, I'm just making it hidden not to be shown. Uh, the main menu, which by default is there. So I just, you can be, you can manipulate it as, uh, as you see fit. So, so I think this is, I would say this is a very easy framework to understand. Uh, if you have questions or if you understand what I just told you, please. Um, you can, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. Okay, go ahead, Eli. Um, my question is, uh, how, how do we integrate now with this with the other project that we are doing? Because since it's a different repository, uh, where do we place those files? Like. Yeah, you can add it on your uh, GitHub repo, and you you can just create a streamlit folder, and install the package, and just create any file. I just created up to a few if you see it. So just create any Python module, and you can build your streamlit there. Uh, once you are done with your uh, use your project on notebook and something, you can choose to save your data on database, right? And from your database, you can connect it with your streaming application and do anything you want with it. Okay. Thanks. 
yeah, the serve.py is just, uh, it's not an important file, it's just for me. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I think there's an option to use the stream with Jupyter Notebook, so you can uh, check it out on the internet. Jarvis. Okay, I'm a bit fast, Grace, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Okay, if you have any questions, maybe you can uh, ask me. I will talk to other time on the second tutorial today. So is it clear? Um, good morning. I will just um, go over the video recording again because I did not really get a lot of things. Sorry, I didn't. Could you repeat? Yeah, I said um good morning that I'm going to go over the video recordings again because I did not really get a lot of things. So I'll just okay. watch the recordings again. Yeah, you start. do that and if you have questions, you can DM me also. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, no more questions, everything clear. Okay, great. So just go over the references and the documentation. It's a very easier framework. I, I don't think you would find it hard to go to your dashboard. Uh, so check it out. And if you have unclear things, you can always ask on the Slack. Yeah, you can also upload image stages. So if there are any more questions, I guess we can stop the recording. And we have tutorial on the afternoon on full stack development. So we can catch up then. And you can use the time to work on your project. OK, go ahead. Is that a question? Yetana? No. Is that a question? I don't know. Okay, Hilary, is that a question? Yes. Um, also, if if I uh, you haven't made any pro uh, so much progress in the Postgres. Uh, database. Uh, should I just start on this one streamlit or must I do the scale first? No, we, the way how you want to do it is, is up to you. If you want to build on the streamlit on the side, you can do that. You can use your time as well as you can since the time is running up for the, the final submission, right? You only have a few days. Can we build the dashboard? Yes, you can build the dashboard using React. The second tutorial also, I'm going to show you how you can use React. Uh, there's no any limitations on which dash, uh, framework you should use to build your React, but the stream lead is mostly used in database in data science projects. Uh, I'm just, we are showing you because you have to know it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to end the recording. Okay. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you for joining me.